Good evening, everyone. We will call this meeting to order of LAFCO. Today is Wednesday, December 5th. If everyone could please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. If we could have our introduction of commissioners, please. Yeah, Bill Berryhill, public member. Amy Bublack, city member. Jim Martini, county member. Terry Withrow, county member. Richard O'Brien, alternate city member. Javier Camarena, assistant executive officer. Sarah Lytle Penny, executive officer. Rob Taro, LAFCO council. Jennifer Goss, commission clerk. Very good. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to make a comment for any item not on the agenda? Anything that's not on the agenda? Five minutes to... Okay, seeing none, we will move on to approval of minutes. The minutes of October 24, 4, 2018 meeting. If everybody's had a chance to read those, we'll look for a motion. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Am I voting today? Yes. I second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Correspondence, please. Yes, so we have uh, two items to note here of correspondence. One is in front of you at the dais. It's a memo from staff uh, requesting continuance of the item 7A, which is the Modesto Mobile Home Park. Um, we can discuss that uh, when we get to that item. And then you have some informational correspondence, which is a letter from Keith Schneider requesting a technical amendment to one of LAFCO's policies. Um, with the chair's concurrence, staff can bring that item back with some draft language for the commission at a future meeting. That's great. Very good. That's it. Yep. No other correspondence. Okay. We'll move on to um, declaration. Anybody have any conflicts or disqualifications? Okay, we'll move on to the consent calendar then. And we'll look for a motion. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We will move on to item seven, our public hearing, um, out of boundary service application, Modesto Mobile Home Park, City of Modesto. So as I had uh, noted earlier, um, this is a public hearing, but staff is currently requesting continuance to our January meeting um, with the hopes that some issues can be resolved um, in terms of the out of boundary versus a potential annexation request. Um, we weren't planning on doing a full presentation, but um, the, the uh, chair can open it up for a public comment at this point and with the recommendation from staff for continuance. Very good. Okay. We will open up the public hearing now. It, it, would anybody like to comment? Anybody from the public like to comment? Seeing none, anyone from the board? I, I would just say, Mr. Chairman, you know, I looked over this item and I could not see any reason why it, you know, the area should be annexed rather than just an out of county uh, hookup. You know, the, you know, when it's a service <clears throat> out of the district, it's usually something that's not feasible to be annexed. But this particular parcel is right at the city and I, I just, really could not see any reason why annexation is, is what we should be considering. Okay. You know, we, uh, I think we have somebody um, from the public that would like, we're at, we're at your item here, I think, now, if you'd like to speak. Oh, I didn't realize you started. Well, am I late? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. We're moving along here, but we're, <laughs> we are there right now. Yes, please, if you could come up and identify yourself. And yes, my name is Margo Ryan. We're, we're going to wait till you get up to the mic here. So that's all right. Take your time. No hurry. My name is Margo Rowan, and I represent CTC Investors um, LLC, the owner of Modesto Mobile Home Park. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, I was under the understanding that there was a kind of a change in plans that Sarah had submitted a memo saying we were possibly going to continue. That's correct. Um, and I'm not opposed to that necessarily, but I do need to make a few things clear. I think there's been some confusion about. Um, two things. One is that there is a, there's been delays that have been caused in getting the OSA before you. And those have not been at the fault of my client. 
And I think it's important to say that because I think we're at a point where a health and safety issue has been in existence for quite some time. And now we were of the understanding that if Modesto, if the city approved our out of boundary services agreement based on there being a health and safety issue, that it was pretty much going to, LAFCO was going to say, okay, we understand. That's a health and safety issue, so let's get you connected to city sewer. Um, what has happened is that LAFCO now has an opportunity, because we are an island, to push annexation. And I think what's happened is it's taking precedent over the health and safety issue. Um, I have tried to make clear at every turn where we've been given a delay that this is an urgent matter. And I've put together a memo for you, if you'll, uh, you'd like to look at it, it's three pages long of every, during this whole process of every roadblock that's been put up in front of us. And the reason I'm bringing this up now is because I was concerned, and I've expressed this to Sarah on a few occasions, I'm concerned that if, if we say, okay, well, well, we'll, we'll table this until January 23rd, that it will somehow be viewed as we're okay with delaying another month. We're really not. But our back is now against the wall. Because if, if we argue for you to approve our outside services agreement and you don't, then we're going to basically have to annex because we have no choice. We have no choice. We cannot, we have to replace the sewer. The systems are failing. I have all the documentation here for you that I wanted to give to you to show all of the pumping and dumping, but that's the phrase that's, that's been going on during this time. And um, while we've been trying to weave through and navigate getting to a place where my client can, can get connected. Um, so that's the problem I'm having because I'm kind of here. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot and say, okay, well, and we are this close to, to being okay with annexing and try, we're trying to work with the city, but some things have come to light recently that we weren't aware of that would be required of my client. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say, let me take some time and look at this and make sure that this is feasible for you. Um, and that's where we're at. So that being said, <laughs> I'm really, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm, I'm forced against the wall here because um, I was listening as, as I came in, I could even hear that there's, th that the tone of, of at least one of you um, was that, why not annex? You're, you're, you're an island, uh, we can expedite the process and do all of that. Even that said, if my engineer, if my con uh, contractor finishes his job, we'll be ready to connect by February. But annexation, probably even with an expedited process, won't occur for, I, how long do you think, Sarah, six months? The intent for the continuance would actually be if an application for annexation is in place by January 23rd, um, the commission, we would recommend approval of the out of boundary so service connection could take place immediately and then annexation could follow. Our annexation process takes um, approximately three months for an island. It's a little quicker than the normal process because there's no protest hearing involved. But we have, yeah, we have to go through the city, go through the application and it has to go to the city, then it has to come to LAFCO. So on top of the delays that have already been caused, um, that would delay us. So there's that concern because we don't want to delay any more than necessary because of it's a health and safety issue. But, but didn't we just say that we would, by the January meeting, be able to go ahead and approve the out of boundary? And, and so then that health and safety issue would then be in the process of being resolved at that point, if right? If you will approve it. I mean, I can't, with, I mean, if, if that is the case, if there's an application in place to annex, um, would you approve can the uh, OSA? Well, that would be for the board to decide. You yeah. can't decide that right yeah, now. Yeah, that'll we be. We'd have to do that on the twenty-third. Right. So, so if let's say that you didn't, then, um, as I said, we would be forced to annex. And I'm trying not to put my client in a position of being forced to do it. Although we technically are, because either way, we have to connect. If you approve the OSA, then we can, we'll just go ahead and connect that way, and that's our preference. Um, but we know down the road annexation is possible. I think it's pretty far down the road. 
for my client, though he's in an island zone, so it's a little bit different. Um, you know, if he wants to connect to water down the line, then he's going to have to annex anyway, unless there's a health and safety issue. Um, so, it, like I said, we're trying to work with the city, but there's another wrinkle that happened this afternoon, and I am kind of here asking for your help to address it. Um, our contractor, when we got the OSA signed by the city and approved, we were under the impression that um, we could start doing work um, because HCD governs our park, as you may know. They govern our park. We, we get permits, we pull permits for them to do work at the park. Um, but HCD would like, wanted county and city to sign off on the work that's going to, the, the plans to, we need to basically run all new sewer lines. So county signed off no problem, and probably because county, you know, we, we, we first we were going, I, I don't know if you know the history of this, we were going to county and getting permits to repair the sewer, but then they stopped us and said, no, you don't, that we made a mistake, sorry. Um, and we were going to continue that way. We were just going to go through with the county and as, as needed, pull permits, repair the sewer, and like I said, they let us do it the first two times at least, and then we went back and said, no, 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 you're, you're close enough to city sewer, you have to connect. And that is when everything, this whole thing started, and it's taken forever to get to this point. So <laughs> if I sound weary and frustrated, it's I okay. am. And I'm losing my voice because I've been talking so much today, trying to get this worked out. Um, now today, my contractor, who has been waiting and allotted a certain amount of time, he allotted time and, and an open block on his calendar to get this work done. So he hit the ground running, went to HCD, got what he needed done, went to county, got what he needed done, has been working with Dan England at the city, Dan's approved the plans, got, all, got it all done, and then today my contractor called and said, hey, um, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, Sarah, but hey, this, this woman, Sarah, Sarah, came by, and Dan was talking to her about annexation and what's going on, and, and, she, he, and she said, we haven't approved their OSA. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Dan's like, I can't issue, I can't, you, you can't get a permit to work, do your encroachment. I can't give it to you. Um, you're not going to be able to do any work until this, either our OSA is approved or annex, or we, we, um, it, he told my contractor until we annex. He said, you have to annex. So you're going to have to get annex first or I can't approve you. Now, so HCD is requiring my client to have that sign off from the city and part of that sign off is an encroachment permit. So now my contractor has purchased, we've given him $150,000 so far to go out and start purchasing equipment. He's storing it on the site. He's been doing everything he can, but without a permit. Everything he can without a permit, because this is a huge endeavor. This is a big mobile home park. He's laying new pipe throughout it. There's a lot that's involved. So now basically, if we can't get that permit, he's going to be sitting there and he's going to have this empty time on his schedule and he's not going to be able to put his employees to work if we can't get that permit now. And so now I have another dilemma I'm facing because that's going to hold us up. If we can't get the permit until January, let's say you uh, um, either approve our OSA or you give us conditional approval based on us submitting an application to Annex, if we can't get that permit until that happens, then that's a month we've lost. So now we're facing another delay because of an, a an agency problem. And I know Sarah says she doesn't have the authority to issue permits, and I understand that. But at some point, I think that the agencies are working together because they all want us to annex. And we're trying to work with you, all of you. And I explained to Paul Lu today, I said, look, you are one agency because everyone says, well, that's not my thing, that's LAFCO, or that's not my thing, that's land and engineering. Um, and so I'm saying, but it's all, my client has to deal with all of it. He has to deal with everybody. And, and it's, so that's a predicament I'm in. And so I'm really coming to you right now just tonight saying, help me figure this out, because if that's the case, it's going to cause a big problem. And um, I'm really not sure what to do, because we can't afford that month. And, and the rainy season is going to get, continue to get worse, and what's going to happen 
is what's happened before. As you know, when sewage seeps out of a failed line or an overflowing line and it rains, then it spreads, excuse me, it spreads rapidly everywhere throughout the park. The other problem with that is that there was recently a lawsuit against a park for failure to manage. And it's something that's, if a park, the restrictions on mobile home parks are really tight. The HCD is really strict, really tight on everything they can and can't do. Um, and tenants know it. And if they fall out of line or the tenants think they're not taking care of the park properly, they can bring a failure to manage suit. And if that happens to us because sewage is running down the street, I mean, we're, we're, getting, we're getting the services out there. And I want to, I'd like to give all of you this information. We're getting the service out there to get it pumped and dumped. But if something happens and it starts raining and then the guy gets out there, you know, they come on an emergency basis and my client has paid them 130000 to date to de pump and dump. That's a lot of money. And all of this, this, the more money he spends doing this, the less money, if he's spending money doing that, and then he has to annex, he's going to spend, it's going to cost him money. He'll be subject to rent control, as you know. There's going to be a utility tax, as you know. So there are different expenses, but he can't do all of it. He wants to do the right thing, but he can't, he can't be hit from every angle and not, and, and not have cooperation. <coughs> it's, it's really just not in the spirit, I think, of working. I think that you guys are here for us as well as you are for individual mobile home park residents, but in order for them to have their homes, he needs to be able to run a business. And, and uh, this is the, all these expenses are, have been very difficult. So um, that said, um, I can't, he can't afford to have his construction held up. So I know you guys aren't the ones that said he can't have a permit, but pretty much you can do something, hopefully, to, to, to help me with that. Um, we are, and we are in good faith working toward, I'm working as fast as I can to try to work out things to understand what annexation is going to mean to my client. He knows pretty much that he's going to have to, if you guys don't approve the OSA, he has no choice. He has to annex. We know what, we know our position. We know, you know, sorry, I'm long-winded. No, that's okay. <laughs> Richard, I think Richard has a question. Here. I do have a question. Um, if we continue this item, mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, today, you can make um, uh, approval of an emergency out-of-service request based on health and safety items, especially, I think, in the verbiage of our policy, uh, you're able to do that. Yeah, I read that as well. The the recommendation, I guess, because of the original recommendation of denial, it's at the, the commission, it's been forwarded to the commission for their decision at this point. So the, the commission could uh, direct EO to approve, um, and I would assume there would be a tie in there of approve with the condition of annexation the following. Con conditional approval with the... At some point. Right. We don't necessarily have the assurance of when and how that annexation application would get to us. Well, it's it's do or die for us. Good. So it's it's gonna get, you know it's gonna I, I'm like I said I'm working really hard to to make it happen and just a couple more things we need to be have clear to make sure that there's not going to be and our, our experience we're a little gun shy because our experience now with with the agencies we've been dealing with and and, and it has been that it's hard to find out every. Get, it's hard to gather information because one, you know, you have to do it from different sources, and there have been mis some misunderstandings and miscommunications, and um, and the problem is that we. I just don't want my client to say definitely I'm going to annex. I mean, he's like this far. He's already saying, yeah, it looks like it's no problem. We know we're going to have to do it anyway, so let's do it and cooperate and get it done quick. Um, so without, we are at that point. It's just like I said, there are a couple of little things that I feel like I wouldn't be doing my job if I just didn't make sure that something's not going to come from somewhere else that we don't know about and it's going to be a huge expense to him because he's already, <coughs> so that's where we are. Yeah. Just so. to finish up with uh, my question to you, what Sorry. would be the uh, difficulty if we said give a conditional approval until we can um, properly address the issue? So I think staff would recommend in order to accelerate um, sort of both goals would be approval of the out-of-boundary 
conditioned upon um, receipt of the annexation application and fee. Actually, it would be um, submitted directly to the city. The city would end up being applicant. Um, so in other words, the connection would not be able to occur until that application and the fee are submitted. And that's something that would, um, that would just be dependent on how long it takes to assemble the actual application, which could be a lot shorter than January 23rd. You know, an application could be submitted tomorrow. But they could continue to go along and, and get their work done under the condition that, you know, the application be submitted. Yeah. The one, the, the one um, thing I'm going to bring up, and just in, this is my like, year and a half of experience of dealing with, um, with, with this issue, is that my cons I, that would be amazing. That would be wonderful. Um, I'm just concerned that, that that's not going to be enough for the city. And Sarah, I don't know if you can speak to that. I wish somebody, I wish Dan England were here because I don't want Dan to say, oh, well, it's conditional. Well, no, we can't, you know, well, we, need, we, need, we need it either approved or we need you annexed. And I can see that a possibility of that the happening. LAFCO, the power of the LAFCO resolution saying, you know, upon sub submitting an annexation application and the appropriate fees to the city of Modesto, connection can be made. I think that's that's powerful enough. He will have a decision. We would just need to confirm with him that the application has been submitted and that the, the fee has also been submitted. Um, I was going to say something else and I forget. Rob, is that going to work? Yeah. Okay. So no Modesto person is present to speak up at all? Nobody's here. There's not one, but we've been communicating all day today and earlier this week. Um, they're generally supportive of um, an application to annex. They just wanted to see that the application was made and that there was a fee submitted. But as they council, don't, they don't voted typically. On it? Well, staff doesn't typically initiate the actual application, okay. but their policies generally are supportive of an island annexation like this. And then I would also note that um, once that application does get to the commission, it is streamlined to the point where the commission doesn't even have discretion. It's an automatic approval, essentially. And the condition that we're placing is just the application and the fee. The city of Modesto will do its own action, but they can be, do the connection on that time. So if, if Modesto says, mm, no, nah, we don't want to do that, then she starts all over? At, at that point, it's, it's, it's unenforceable beautiful. until some future annexation occurs. And Modesto is looking at the North McHenry area, but that's very long term. I was told maybe up to 30 years out. <laughs> mm. So, um, I, you see the predicament I'm in. So how long, I'm sorry, how long, was it, I'm sorry, Angela, I'm sorry, your first name? Margo. Mar 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 Margo. Margo, I'm yes, sorry. That's sorry, okay. that, that wasn't it's even right. close. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. All right. <laughs> okay, sorry, Margo. It's okay. Okay. So, um, how long has your client owned the mobile home park? Oh, gosh. Quite a while. Okay. I, I don't know the exact date. I'm just looking at the history head. here, and it goes yeah. back to 98, and at one point it was mm -hmm. thought to be annexed. So it was, he, your, your client has not owned the mobile home park back in the previous time, back in 98, when this first was um, I considered. don't believe so. Okay. No. Okay. So um, that, just, so, just to clarify, if conditional approval is given, for the OSA, that would be the trigger point where where we would the city would issue the permit to for encroachment. We we wouldn't be waiting until we submit our application because that's going to take probably a, you know that's going to take some time itself. You know, there's quite a bit involved in that. Well, I think what we just said to the application and the fee paid, and then that would be the the that's kicker. The emphasis. Yeah. yeah. So you don't think you could get the application in quickly with the fee? for the annexation? Well, I think what's, so basically once I do that, then I'm pretty much saying we're annexing. So I, what I was asking and before, what we, what, yeah, yeah what, what, we were, what we were saying tonight is we were going to continue this so that I had a little more time to do due diligence about what the annexation would mean for my client. Okay, so if we so, continue it though, we don't start anything until, you, until it comes back in January. Right, I mean that's right. But what I was asking your help for tonight is to find a way to continue the work. The work's going to be done no matter what. So you're but saying just basically approve the out of boundary right now, and then on the on hope the condition, that you're going to come back. Where's our Where's our hook there to get you to come back? 
What condition were you? Well, you kind of have me hooked already, because <laughs> because if you guys don't approve the OSA, we're annexing. There's no. You know, there's no. If we you guys, the OSA, I feel like I kind of got the. <laughs> right, but if we approve the OSA right now, why will you come back? Well, you're conditionally it? approving it. So. And I, what, what what can we what condition can we so put on it to make you um, apply for application for annexation? <laughs> I think that we should Wrong. require you know them to file an application. Right. Because otherwise, we'll just wait till January and see what you want. But if you want to. <clears throat> Go ahead and get the the out of boundary service um, approved there, and just on the condition that you apply for an annexation and pay the fees. I don't think that that's unreasonable. But I would be concerned that uh, if we just let you do the uh, out of boundary service application there, we'll never see you again. Well, I understand where you're coming from. I do. Um, no, that's your two choices. Okay, my applic the application, from what I understand, is Sarah is. Um, I mean, how long do you think I haven't done been through this process? Because it's existing development, it's it's a lot easier for um, city staff was offering to provide assistance to for the application. I assume it's a lot like ours, where it's going to be asking about what the development is and and what services are to be provided for the development. In this case, because it's existing. Uh, there's not a lot of analysis needed there. Thank you. It's 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 not something that's going to be um, requiring um, extensive environmental review and things like that that would normally take additional time. So, is do you have an estimate? Like, <laughs> probably dependent on uh, uh, city staff uh, Paul Lou's availability. But but, but um, we're not ro we really worried down. about that, aren't yeah. we? Just worried about you getting the application in and paying the fee, and not how long it's going to take the city to process it, isn't that? I'm not sure why that's a concern. No, it's just getting it submitted. Well, to submit it, don't I have to submit all this stuff with it? I have to submit mm -hmm. maps. I have to submit. It's not just an application and a fee. It's submitting maps. It's having water calculation tests. It's all of this stuff. Well, we can well, maybe part of the condition of this can be that just get the. I mean, there's always going to be think more things that are needed, right? Once an application is in, there's mm -hmm. always going to be. So um, unfortunately, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. But but couldn't our condition just be that the, you just physically submit an application with whatever you can, um, assuming that it's not going to be have everything there, pay the fee, and then we know that. That we're good to go, and I guess it, you have to make sure that it can't be withdrawn. I guess too, right? I mean, we and once the fee is is paid, they're pretty much non-refundable. Yeah. How much is the fee? That's city staff was providing quotes on that, and I'm not sure what they ended up with. Okay. Well, we were trying to negotiate the fee because that's another expense, and basically, like I said, we're we are. You understand, we are basically, unless you guys approve <coughs> the OSA, we're. We have to annex. We have no choice. So, um, the fees seventeen and change approximately. Okay, so I mean, you can just see our only concern is I know you're telling us you're gonna you're gonna do no, this. No, no, I get and it. And we trust you. I get it. Um, but I get but it. We, we and I've, just, I've I've made that mistake. I've yeah. trusted some things that people have said. <laughs> right. You know, at the city, and I've gotten bitten um, a little bit. So, yeah. um, I understand that, and I don't I don't know I what other hook. Um, I can give you. I mean, we can enter into some type of agreement, initial agreement, uh, just an easy one pager. We can do that, stating that that's our intent. We just have to get the application done because I just don't want to. Is is there? See, if I have to work with an agency, they're not even here. I they've de they've delayed me, and you'll get my memo. <laughs> they've delayed me so many times for s different reasons that have just. I'm just so gun shy. Like I, like I feel like you do right now. How can I trust that Sarah can say, you know, will we get the application and fee in? I mean, Sarah, is there some something abbreviated that we can say? Um, I can just fill it in, apply. We can apply. We can pay the fee, and then get the maps and all of that stuff done at a later point. I mean, is that because if it's going to take two to three weeks to 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 for me to submit a complete application? We might as well wait till the 23rd. Right. It sounds like the best bet all the way around so that we don't get too many, this, we'll do this if you do that, and we we'll start playing chess. I think your concern is that we, everybody needs to know that there's an urgency, and, but you have a lot of things to do in the background, so what I'm hearing is we need to continue it. Continue. Well, 
I mean, I, like I said, the problem with that, then, then you're saying that my contractor who created this whole block of time to do all this work can't do anything until January 23rd? They wouldn't anyway, would they? We're not saying that. We're saying that that's the choice you want. If you want us to continue it on the 23rd, mm -hmm. then okay. we will. If okay. you want to put in your application as rapidly as possible, as soon as your application and fee is paid, okay. your contractor can start work. Okay. Okay. So, and so Sarah, is there... I'm working on wording. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how about um, the Commission would approve the proposal subject to submittal of an annexation application and fees acceptable to the City of Modesto um, prior to connection... Uh, I'm in there somewhere. Council might need to help me with that. <laughs> you can do all your work internal. It's the external and the easement is where you won't work until that's approved. When you say internal, what internal the property, you, on the property? On, the, on your property. Well, we can't do anything now. We've been stopped. That's the whole point. I can't, I mean, this. But that's what we're allowing. Right, I understand. I, did, I wasn't sure if he was saying that we can do the internal work now, or I wasn't, I wasn't sure I misunderstood you. Okay, you're saying this would allow us to do our internal work, but not the actual connection. Not, not encroachment on the easement. Well, we need the encroachment permit to do our work. Right. <laughs> okay. To do the internal okay. work. Sorry, if I'm misunderstanding you. It's getting too messy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think if we tie in prior to connection, that may allow the city to be a little bit more flexible. It's still at their discretion, obviously, but it might add some flexibility for them in issuing the permit. Say that again, Sarah. I didn't sure so I was, I was going to throw in there, um, approves the proposal subject to submittal of an annexation application and fees in an acceptable form to the city of Modesto prior to um, connection of the parcel. So we're putting all the onus on... <laughs> Bless you, the city of Modesto then. Well, it is, it's still their responsibility um, and their discretion to issue the actual permit. Control Modesto. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, Council's so suggesting we may want to take a five-minute break just to okay, tie let's down do that, that right, language. Let's, just take a, let's take a five-minute break and just work on some better language here and see, and then we'll come back in five minutes here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Your bread's getting cold. I know. It's pretty warm butter. What does he do? Ice cream bread? It was congratulatory bread. Oh.
next time, let's have one of those um, glasses. I'm going to bring one of those glasses. Yeah, forget the, forget the nuts. We might have scratches on them like ugly sunglasses. <laughs> I think we've taken a lot of time here to get this done. So I'm either going to cooperate or we'll just wait till next month. Okay, let us, um, hold on one second, hold on one second. Oh, I'm sorry. We got our mics back. Okay. Okay, we're back. We're going to call this meeting back to order, and we are hoping that there was some um, resolution amongst staff and Margo. I believe so. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we have some proposed language, which would be in addition to um, the resolution 2018-20 option one which would be um, for approval, what we would do is we would add a condition um, under the very last section where it says that the commission authorizes the city of Modesto to provide the requested sewer service subject to the following terms and conditions. We would add um, a condition that says prior to connection, the property owner must submit the appropriate annexation application and fees in a form acceptable to the city of Modesto. And we're hoping that that covers everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Simple and direct. I, I do have one question. Um, the question is if, if, and I had, we tried to discuss this, but they, really you guys don't have control over this. If I'm trying to, you know, and I hate doing things in a rush, but I'm trying to kind of do my due diligence, as I said, if I get hit with a big surprise or a big expense that's going to make, um, that I don't know about yet, that's going to make annexing unfeasible for my client, then what happens then? then? Then do we have to start all over or can we come back before the commission? I'm not See, sure. I think it keeps coming back to why don't we just continue to the 23rd to help you do your due diligence so that you don't have to play the ifs. I think that's the safest bet really. I appreciate you working on all that uh, litigious work uh, over there. But it, you're not sure what your client ultimately wants. If we, we put you in that position, you lose money. Well, um, we, if, like I said, I wish somebody from the city were here who could speak to this because we're, everything as it is now that we know of, we're fine. We're going we're gonna to submit our application. There's just that contingency and I'm not sure how to <coughs> account. I was just asking you, like, it can, I guess we can't, we can't get on the agenda. We can't have a, well, <coughs> if something like that were to happen, we could be back on the agenda right away. We can't do that. We'd have to have a special meeting. I think probably would be the only way we could do that. Is that well? It wouldn't necessarily be a special meeting, but in theory, she could request um, to be put back on the agenda for um, it would be another review, I guess, of the of the item. But it wouldn't be before our next meeting. <clears throat> probably not. But it would be at least we'd have the January twenty third meeting, which could. I just don't want to delay any longer. We've got rain coming in, and we're nervous about leaking suing lines and I think I would still recommend going ahead with this approval and if the approval doesn't work out have a request come back to the Commission okay in January can yeah. we get it the on next the next available meeting for a at that point though I mean it would be another we'd be starting from scratch it'd be still another review but for the out-of-boundary service it, it so. may be a similar recommendation I'm not sure how how that's gonna happen Right. So it, it may be difficult also to meet the noticing requirements for the January 20, 23rd meeting. For an application out for out of boundary, a new application for an out of boundary. We have a 21 day notice. So 21 days from the next meeting is, you said January 23rd? Mm -hmm. If we continue it tonight to date specific, um, we don't have to have a noticing requirement necessarily, um, but then you're not approving anything in the meantime. So we're kind of, le I'm going to put this back to you, Margo. <laughs> um, uh, you're going to have to roll the dice which way you'd like to go. I think we want to accommodate you, but I think you need to, uh, wh which way would you rather prefer? I mean, those are the two options, we think. So am, am I, I don't want to speak for the rest of the board, but I think that's kind of what we're looking at, those being the two options. And so if that's the case, which would you prefer? Okay, just so I'm clear before I'm committing to this, then that means that we, we won't have a date specific um, if we know by, 
if we know for sure by the time you'd have to submit notice, then if we, you know, we're able to gather everything we need and we feel assured of what's happening and what it's going to entail, um, or if we get our application submitted by the time you need to submit notice, I guess then it's a moot issue. But could you put it, if we had a problem, you could get it back on the agenda for, I guess, you'd have time to get it back on the agenda? You're saying you might not? It's almost like a new application. If, if this is approved tonight and mm -hmm. then you decide that you cannot or don't want to meet these conditions, it, it would be essentially like coming back with a new application for an out-of-boundary. I have so, to submit another application, fill out another one, and submit another one. And you may actually want to do that because you, it sounds like you may have some additional information at that point to provide to some additional documents or background information for why it didn't work out. And in order to make sure the the January twenty third meeting, when would that application have to be in noticing with the, by the second of January? It, it it starts getting really close to holiday time because we would need to notice it twenty one days in advance, but. Staff needs at least a couple days before that to even get the noticing together. So you're in. You're in December. Yeah. yeah. December 27th. So, so today is the fifth. Mm -hmm. So you would have whatever 22 mm -hmm. days yeah. to find out from Modesto whether yeah. this is going to be a problem or not. Okay. Yeah. And that could be done. Okay. I mean, I like I said, we're like right here. It's just we got a couple things thrown our way that we didn't we ran aware of on Monday so but then understand if it okay so if that if there is a problem then all of a sudden you're going to come back to this out of service application again that, um, that there, there are these deadlines here that we can't that we don't want you to come back upset because you didn't make the January 23rd because you couldn't get those make, meet those deadlines. well I right? don't completely understand the process I guess I guess if I tell Sarah by January by December 27th if I tell her uh, are you saying if I tell you it's no go, then you can get it back on the agenda? I think we need the application. We need we need more information than that. We need something in writing, preferably an application with whatever new information is attached. Okay. So, but you do need the city. Now, do I have to go to the city and they have to approve the application? Or you're no. talking about the out-of-boundary service. We're just talking about getting back to LAFCO requesting yeah. an out-of-boundary again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's what we're going to shoot for then. Let's. Um, I guess we need to. Um, is everybody okay with let Sarah kind of read what this, um, what we're going to vote on here? Yeah, it's a little awkward because it, it's sounding like it is going to be a conditional approval, but then there may be some some changes later on. All right. So so what, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at an approval. It's conditional on an application and fees paid. Right. And um, yeah. Okay. And as far as the deadline to do that, the application and fees. Um, well, the, the approval, happens. the approval with the, the condition here is you know prior to connection, okay. the the annexation application being submitted. So we're hoping that that would be as soon as possible. And it, and we need it to be because if uh, we need to know for sure because I if not we have to. We have to be able to get this back on in front of you guys on the agenda, um, so it's you know it okay. push, pushes us. And if if Lafka will Sarah will work with me to try to do everything Lafka you can right can now. to get the application. Right, or we don't have to see you again if everything goes smooth with Modesto. That's correct. Very good. Okay. <laughs> I'm Everybody sorry okay if it was that? unpleasant. Yeah, I guess. So, okay, so let's. Company. We spent an hour on this already. That so go ahead and read the public. We've actually treated you very well on this. You have here, treated that, me that extremely we've taken an well. Hour you have. And you don't seem to know what you want to do, so we, you have two options. So we're going to go one way or the other. Otherwise, you can come back January 23rd. I suspect that your problems with the sewer system of this park. Or is not anything recent. It's probably been going on for quite some time. So you're uh, <clears throat> coming to this commission there in such an urgency as you should have probably started sooner where you got I, to this point. I, with all due respect, I, I'm going to give you a memorandum telling you everything that has happened that has put a, a wrench in this process, you know. And I'm not sure when you're suggesting we should have started, but we started. 2016, we got our septic tank, the septic tanks, you know, inspected, and then we. I think you know that the wheels move pretty slowly sometimes, 
anyway without any hiccups and when you have hiccups it can prolong things for months so that's kind of the situation we've been in and again I don't foresee anything coming up that would would keep us from wanting to go ahead and annex I don't foresee that I've just at this point I've had some things happen that have been surprised to me out of the blue that I, I it's hard to speak to that so I mean I think we'd like to in the spirit of what we've worked so hard and talked about today and everything I think we'd like to, to go this direction where we will work on getting our application in right away and move forward okay very good. Okay, um, I can't even remember. We had, we had a public well, we hearing here that I need to close. Or yeah. have I closed the yes. public? Did I already close the public hearing? I don't think no, we did. She's still talking. Okay, we're open. Okay. okay, so now if, if everybody's good, we're going to close the public hearing and we'll bring it back to the commission for decision. And um, so we'll look for a motion. Um, if everybody, uh, one of the options is the approval, uh, conditional approval based on an application and, and fee to the city of Modesto. And maybe we should have Sarah um, read yes, that. Please. And then, yeah, and then we'll good. vote on it. So the, the motion would be to um, approve or adopt uh, resolution 2018 20, which was originally option one, with the addition of uh, a condition that says prior to connection, the property owner must submit the appropriate annexation application and fees in a form acceptable to the city of Modesto. Very good. So that is the language. Do we have a motion? Move. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope it all works out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I hope so too. Thank you. Sarah, thank you. Good job, guys. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to commissioner comments. Any comments? Yeah, well, Mr. Chairman, I think um, I would like to call attention to uh, uh, Keystone's um, letter in the correspondence that the LAFCO Commission look at the timing of the fee for the ag uh, mitigation. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't appear to me that the the idea of mitigating for ag land. Uh, loss is an issue here. It is just the uh, when the fee is actually paid. And I think it might be appropriate to have staff uh, just look into this and um, give us some options. And so, so you order. mean like deferred? You're implying some deferred uh, payment then, potentially? <clears throat> well, it's a <clears throat> a different timing from what it is right now. Right. I think it's at the time right now. It's listed as a grading permit. <clears throat> and I can't find the letter in here, but it's. Um, I think they wanted <coughs> wanted at the uh, at the uh, building permit time, I believe. Right, that's what they're looking for, just to move and push it back from at the time of the grading permit to. to yeah, no, I think the only thing that we're asking, uh, it's being asked of us, <coughs> is that we just look into this and decide. Um, whether or not we want to do do that or not. We can bring it back with more information and some language that will hopefully solve the problem. Okay. Very good. That good, Jim? Everybody, yeah, I, I okay just want that. Everybody have, okay with that? Have staff look into that and make a recommendation. Okay. That sounds good. Very good. Any other commissioner comments? Okay. Seeing none, um, additional matters of discussion of the chairperson? None? Executive officer's report. Yeah, on the horizon for January, um, we have three upcoming district dissolutions that we'll be bringing forth. And these are districts that have been inactive for many years, um, such that they uh, haven't even been formally recognized by LAFCO. So the <laughs> state controller is uh, requesting that they now officially be dissolved. Um, so that'll be interesting. We also have the mid-year budget and an annexation to the Keys Community Service District and a CSA also in that area. Um, I'm looking towards February uh, to address the item from Keith Schneider, and that is all. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for um, kind of working through this. You guys, good job tonight. I'm working off the fly here. Very good. And seeing no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Have a good Christmas, everybody. <laughs>